Snagimo, the gizzard yakitori, with some karashi. The crunch. You just hear the crunch. Hey, Yaki Gang, Yakitori guy here. In the previous lessons, we made hatsu and reba, both popular and common chicken organ items found in Yakitori shops in Japan. If you guys want to learn how to make those, just scroll back a few videos. Now for today's lesson, I wanted to show you guys another chicken organ item. The snagimo, which is the chicken gizzard. The gizzard is an organ found in the digestive tract of birds. And it basically functions to help grind down the food that the birds eat. Since birds don't have teeth, you often see them pecking at gravel or sand, which they actually store inside the gizzard. That essentially acts as a muscular sandpaper that helps grind the seeds. In fact, the name snagimo, it literally means sand organ. As a muscular organ, the gizzard can be chewy. But just like the juicy heart and the rich and creamy liver, people are seeking out the gizzard because of this iconic crunchy texture. And just like on a whole chicken where you break apart the whole chicken so you can isolate the different flavors and textures, we want to do the same thing with the gizzards as well. So we still have to prepare them in a way that we're going to get the best crunchy yet soft flavors and textures from each of these pieces. So today, let me show you guys how to prepare, skewer, and grill chicken gizzards for yakitori at home. When you purchase gizzards from the store, it's already gonna be cut open and cleaned out. So before this is cut, imagine it like this. The food will go through one end and come out the other and it's gonna be grinded out. Inside is a sack, which it's gonna be removed by the butchers at the factory. And although it's clean out, sometimes you still might find some seeds or gravel inside. So just quickly rinse it out and dry it out. So when looking at the gizzard, I notice basically we have the reddish pink. This is the main muscle part. This is what we wanna eat. However, there's sort of this connective white area. That area is very tough, so that's what we're gonna cut off first. The first step is cutting off all the tough white skin sections. Just look where the white part ends and connects to the red pink section. I'm always looking for the big plump pieces. It's just so much easier to cut. So just cut off right at the white line right here. So big pieces like this, they're good. When cutting gizzard, make sure your knife is sharp though. If you have a dull knife, it's gonna be very tough to cut through. Gizzard is just very tough. So you have the plump red section and then the white section. That's where we're gonna cut through. So slice it through and slice the other side right through. And then the white skin, we're gonna save that for the another skewer. All right, keep on cutting. And as we cut, I'm gonna sort them, just small ones and big ones. Just gonna sort them out, the gizzards. And then the skin, we'll leave them on the side. That's for the other skewer. All right, so we have the gizzards here. And on the bottom, you're gonna see this sort of ribbed section right here. It's a little bit crunchy. Some shops, they're gonna take that off, but I'm gonna leave it on there. So the red part here, that's like the main muscle and it's really crunchy, but also soft. The white part just adds a little bit more texture. So I'm gonna leave it on these skewers. So for these gizzards, I'm gonna use the round skewers, the marugushi. Let's go ahead and skewer them. So gizzards are a little bit tough. So we wanna go at a 45 degree angle pushing into the cutting board. Almost like shooting pool. Just going at the angle straight, but curving it straight forward out. Once you get that rhythm though, just keep on pushing it. Feels really good. Just, there's that resistance in gizzard that I really like skewering. So just keep on skewering some more. Just use your hand, push it down. Use your other hand to push the gizzard back down the skewer. and then just knead it into place. Just strain everything out. All right, let's see one more, the last one. Same thing, just 45 degree angle, pushing into the cutting board. And then with the gizzard, you wanna flatten it out. Just use a cutting board and just put your hand over and just flatten it out. This makes it nice and neat and balanced and it's just gonna cook much more evenly. 
And another thing too, you don't need too much of the tip. Just enough so the meat is not gonna fall off the skewer. Also with yakitori, when it's traditionally cooked, it's on this rod and it's just need enough so it balances on. You don't need any more than that, too much of it. And when you're eating it, it's gonna hit the back of your throat. So just be careful when making these. We have these white parts that we cut off. They're very tough. It's gonna be very crunchy, but I'm gonna just still skewer them. It's been a fun skewer. Now this area though, this is actually soft. We can still use this part, but these white parts, I'm gonna separate them out. Very, very, very tough. But some people might like it, but these soft parts, we can definitely keep. This, call this Engawa in Japanese. And Engawa is basically the name of the, the fin area around, let's say like halibut or flounder. So because this has that similar crunchy, chewy texture, they call the skewers using this part ingoa. So I'm just gonna try to make some of this ingoa skewer, but also make something from these white skewers, as white parts as well. So the white is just super tough. You can just, the knife is barely gonna go through. However, you're gonna be able to find certain parts that are still, I wanna say lighter in color, so like right here, this white is tough, but this part is definitely softer. So we're gonna isolate those. So within here, the white is the white is tough, but right here is still soft part. So let's get that. These are all the whites. Let's try to make something out of this. Getting the smaller piece. I wanna say it's sort of similar maybe to texture of the harami, the belly meat right here. If we had more of this, then it would be a bigger skewer. But for now, right here, so this is ingo. It'll come up nice and crispy. Now with these white pieces though, they're super crunchy. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to make essentially a negima with just these crunchy parts. Yeah, really, really tough. Very tough even for this skewer to go through. But with tare, cooks it pretty well. So I'm just gonna go ahead and skewer these through. Put in some negi in there. It's already very tough. The tip of this skewer is somewhat getting dull. But let's go ahead and just finish this up and trim. quick skewer with some negi in between. Let's go ahead and make another one. All right, so this is Engala. So the softer parts of the gizzard. This is just gonna be the very crunchy, think of this as beer food. All right, so I got my skewers here, my regular gizzard and the hard skin and then the Engala. Here the grill is going nice and hot. I'm using a lower position for this because I want it nice and hot, especially with the gizzards. You want to get it nice and crispy, so I'm gonna do the lower position. So let's go ahead and put this on. Always remember to, to salt these. Got the crispy skin. Skin and then the engawa. Go ahead and salt these ones too. Some sake spray in that lower position so it's heating up real quick. I'm gonna leave it on for a little bit more. So these gizzards are Mary's chicken's gizzards. A little bit smaller than what I was using in Japan. The ones in Japan, I wanna say some of them were twice as big and some of them were even three times as big as this. And so this one I have five per skewer, but the ones in Japan will maybe put three per skewer. They're that much larger. And just really big and crunchy. So these are gonna be a little bit small, but it's still gonna provide you that nice sort of gizzard, crunchy texture that really goes well, I would say with beer, ice cold beer. By cooking on these edges, it just really ensures that I can get it nice and brown, even on the sides right here. All right, these are almost good to go. One more splash of sake, just to give it that nice coating of umami. Let's go ahead and get this tare ready. 
next to my grill here. So we're good to go with these. Let's go ahead and dip this into the tare. Make sure all the juices go back into the pot. This back on. Tare. There we go. I'm gonna dip it more into tare. It's really about getting that coating. The tare, let it char a bit, caramelize. It's that smell. There's as soon as a tare hits this grill, the the coils or charcoal drips down on there, it gets hot. It just creates this really umami rich sort of soy flavor. That that smell, and that's the yakitori smell that you just can't get enough of. All right, so these are good. Let's get these plated. Dip again, get a final coat tare here. So the gizzard. Then I want to put some hot mustard as a condiment to this. All right, guys. So we have here is the snagimo, the gizzard yakitori, with some karashi. The crunch. You just hear the crunch. I want an ice cold beer with this so bad. Mm. All right, so we have here the regular gizzard, and then the it's the very tough gizzard skin with some of that negi, the whole onions, and then the soft gizzard skin. So even from one gizzard, one organ, we have a variety of textures. They're all going to be crunchy, but just variations in textures. And one thing that I really love about yakitori, as you guys know, is even from one bird, whether it's the juicy thigh or that crispy skin or crunchy gizzard, you get all these textures. And now you guys know the juicy heart and that creamy liver and we have here that crunchy gizzard so you guys know all the organs now with yakitori especially in japan there are a few other organs things like kidneys ovaries that you can find at yakitori shops in japan unfortunately it's a little bit harder to find those here in the states even for me at the butchers or grocery store so if i can get to it i would love to make those videos but for now you should be able to get heart liver gizzard at your store so if you guys make gizzard at home let me know how you think about that crunchy texture just write in the comments or message me anytime on my instagram just happy to always answer your questions and and see your development and growth with yakitori all right so that's it for today so i'll see you guys in the next video bye guys